Welcome back to Mic Up or Shut Up. This is episode 18, and I have the usual suspects here with a very, very special guest. I'm here with my brother-in-law, Chris. Big dick in the house. And his wife, Angie. Hi. Oh, my God. And a very special <laughs> guest today, the Grinch. <laughs> yeah. Say hello, Grinch. Hello, Grinch. <laughs> She is anti everything holiday. Yep. And it really is absurd. I've never seen any grinchier person in my life. My lovely wife. What you're referring to is the fact that we had more than one Christmas topic that we could discuss tonight and we were denied we could only discuss one Christmas denied, topic. Denied, yes. Yeah. Too much Christmas is yeah. painful to her, right. apparently. She just doesn't so, like it. She's not a Christmas fan. Even though I'm a Christmas fan. Well of course you are. I love Christmas. Yeah, the, you have a problem though. Oh yeah. Yeah, you buy a gift and you want to give it immediately to the person you have bought it for. I know. I do. I do have that uh, seeking instant gratification. Oh, I know. I hide shit. Situation. Yeah, I do have that. That is a problem for me. But that just means that I'm so anxious to see the joy in your heart that I can't wait for it. I have to give it to you right then. So why do we need Christmas then? To <laughs> bring joy. To bring joy. You oh got my on God. That, you got that was on such that. a good question. And I don't have an answer. Don't play with me, woman. <laughs> okay, that's not what you were saying last night. Oh, oh my God. Bodie, you have nothing to complain we, about today. We nothing to, to complain about. We need to change the title of the of the uh, podcast because I'm noticing a sexual theme in every no, episode that I am not, not necessarily. Oh, about. okay, Mr. Big Dick. Yeah. Well, that's the name. That's yeah. not a. That's not. I'm not discussing anything. I'm just letting everybody know who I am. That's who I am. Okay. Yes. Yes. Propaganda. False as it may be. Well, let's see. Oh my God. A lot of women were limping. Oh. <laughs> A lot of women were limping. limping. Yeah. Oh, you know, nice. walking bow-legged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that old thing. <laughs> I heard they were just celibate now. Oh. oh. Or turned gay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Still counts. It does. Still got it. You're right, it does. It does still count. <laughs> That's a fact. We do know it does still count. It is Christmas time, though. Whether you like it or you don't, it is that time of year. Where everyone comes out of pocket with all of their money nope. and just forks it over for all of their kids that who will eventually be ungrateful for the gift that they have received. Eventually. Well, on Christmas morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Eventually. Because people like you don't give gifts right away like me. Well, no. Because if I got to deal with the fucking holiday, then I'm going to, you know, make save them, it for the holiday. Make them wait for it. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, the topic we wanted to discuss tonight was uh, the best and worst Christmas gift you ever got in your whole life. So, who wants to go first? You. You, oh, you I came up with first? the topic. Oh, actually, actually, I did. Yeah, actually, oh. I did not. I oh. Actually, I did, but we're going to let him go first because he has really good ones. All right. So, uh, I guess I'll do the best and then I'll do the worst. No, do the worst first. No, the worst. Do, no I, I just told you I'm going to do the best first. Oh, my God. I'm not a simp. I do what I want. I, I don't let a woman tell me what don't to do. Don't play with me, woman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, the best gift I ever got, I was 13, I believe, 13 or 14. Um, I used to, people that know me, I used to raise birds. And I had, uh, first started out, I only had a few parakeets. I had uh, this little finch called a zebra finch. And uh, <clears throat> I had three pair. They were only a couple of different kinds, like a, the males were all silver colored and the females were like one was gray, one was silver, so it was nothing was really exciting. And it was this was pre-internet, so uh, I didn't really have any bird books, so I didn't know that there were other colors available for these birds. I, I thought that was it. And uh, so dad went and spent a lot of money, probably a couple, few hundred dollars buying all these awesome rare colors of this finch. And there's several pair. And uh, all kind of different beautiful colors, white ones and spotted ones, and just all kind of awesome stuff. And uh, so he brings the cage out, wrapped in a towel, and he sets the cage down. He, when he pulled the towel off, and I saw this just amazing array of different colors of bird, I mean, my jaw literally dropped open. I couldn't believe how beautiful they were. You know, it was, it was one of the most exciting things. 
for me. And that's the best gift I ever got. Birds. You Those suck. Birds. You Those suck. Birds. Because the best I bought you a really great gift. You did buy me a really great gift, but you said best your whole life, man. So. Hey, look. Hey, really great I want you to look at me. I'm going to give you the best gift you ever got. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten that go. gift many times. <laughs> what was your worst gift? So my worst gift was... Uh, I, I was on the just, opposite end of yeah, the spectrum. Yeah, on the opposite end. So, uh, also given to me by my dad. Uh, so, when I was in high school, my dad started working um, for the um, the cable company in town, Cox Communications. And uh, they used to get a lot of uh, promotional material uh, sent to them. To, I don't know what the fuck, I don't know exactly what they were supposed to do with it, but it would get like calendars and posters and ink pens and cassette tapes with little cl- snippets of shows and shit like that. And uh, so the first year that he started working for um, the cable company, all of his children gifts said Showtime. It was like a calendar that said Showtime on it or a poster for some fucking TV show. Or an, I had an ink pen that said Showtime. I mean, that, that's all it was. it was. He spent no money that year on his children. He just gave us all promotional material from uh, the cable company he worked at. So I consider that to be the worst gifts I ever do. Yeah. Love it. So that should be your worst gifts as well. Right? It's not. It's not, though? You appreciate it, You can go gifts? first. You can go before me. Uh, well, I mean, I, the worst gifts. I don't know about the worst gift. Like, I don't know that I have one worst gift. I just remember growing up with my two sisters. Apparently, my mom wanted triplets. Uh-huh. But, uh, you know, she... I don't know, at some point started buying us each a porcelain doll for Christmas. And, and that was great when we were eight. But then when we were 12 and 13 and she was still wasting the money on porcelain dolls and we were thinking, yeah, we could have got like cooler shit than this. And then every fucking year she gave us something that matched. Like a shirt, a sweater. All three of us girls got the same piece of clothing. It was just a different color. And, you know, Chris never was included in that. He always got his own special dress. Oh, he didn't get the dresses? Yeah, I didn't get the dress and the porcelain dolls. How unfair. No, it's unfortunate. How unfair. I would have loved to see you in the same dress as your sister. I'm sure you would. (laughs) Oh, but I do. Do you remember the year we got an IOU in our our stockings? No, I don't. Yeah. uh, Hey, sometimes life is hard. That's what I was about to say is I have never more appreciated that than I do now as an adult with six children. But one year, apparently, the way our family does it is we get stockings for New Year's Day. And uh, so we get Christmas gifts on Christmas and then our Christmas stocking on New Year's Day. That's Christine, right? Yeah, Yeah, because he's Santa's wife. Which is dumb. Well, whatever. It doesn't matter. It was extra gift. That's right. So, uh, our mom always bought us, I mean, it was like candy and stuff in a stocking, but then it was always like just one one gift, one small gift, about $20 worth of whatever, and usually it was like perfume or statuette or, you know, just something, you know, nothing mm-hmm. big deal, but it, yeah. we always liked yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, and one year, she literally put an IOU in each of the things because she didn't get a chance to buy any of the gifts. Now... I vaguely remember her saying, like, I just didn't get the chance to go. Now, as an adult, I'm thinking, man, yeah, she probably just really didn't have the fucking money. 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 Oh, yeah. Of course, didn't want to tell us that she didn't have the money to buy us the gifts. But I I appreciate that now, for sure. I don't remember getting the IOU, but I do remember when mom and dad were both out of work for a long period of time. So, I'm sure that was the year that uh, we got the IOU. So, yeah, she gets she gets hey, real sometimes. Oh no, yeah, it gets real. Yeah, it does get. Obviously, real. it didn't hurt my feelings because I don't recall that being my worst gift. Ever. No, no, I, I'm just that was not my worst gift. That particular IOU. I'm just saying, as an adult <laughs> now, I can appreciate. Yeah. You know <clears throat> right. how hard it must have been to yeah. write IOUs instead yeah, yeah. of just giving us the stocking with candy. Like right. she didn't want to disappoint us because she gave us a gift every year. Right. So Reese, um, I think I know what you're getting for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> An IOU. Uh, my best gift, I guess, would have to have been um, we opened all our gifts, and my parents really, well, no, my mother really did her best to <laughs> spend the exact same amount of money on each of us. Mm-hmm. And I remember we had all opened our gifts, and I just thought, man, I got fucked this year. <laughs> like, 
I really got nothing nice. <laughs> it was all a little chaunchy stuff. Like, I got time screwed out. over. Time out. I remember last episode, you discussing children opening up gifts and being ungrateful bastards. Now, wait. You <laughs> Just know? remember that as you continue the story. Let her remember, tell her this story. is a fucking story, right? About yeah. the best Christmas okay, gift. Okay, all right, all right. Okay. All right. So I just remember feeling really disappointed that, you know, I I just really felt slighted compared to everybody else. So um, we lived next door to our aunts and uncles and everything, and our cousins were around, like, literally on the same block. And um, they said, oh, why don't you run next door, see what your cousins got for Christmas? So we did. A little bit later, we come home, and Dad says, oh, y'all all forgot one one present under the tree. And under the tree was my number three that had been on the list every year until that year. And it was a hamster. And the reason why it didn't look like they had spent as much money was because they had paid for an aquarium for it to live in, which obviously cost a good amount of money. And then I understood why, you know, it looked like I had been slighted, but that was probably the best Christmas gift because I really thought I was fucked at one point. And then I got the number three item on my list from every year before then. <laughs> Well, Richard Gere would still think he was fucked by that gift. <laughs> Actually, that'd be yes, his favorite but that gift. would, that would, be, that would also be his best gift. Allegedly. Gift. Allegedly. <laughs> Until he had to get it removed surgically, <laughs> yeah. then it would be a problem. <laughs> your turn. Mm -mm, your turn. Yep, your turn. Uh, worst would always. My grandmother doesn't know what to buy. My grandmother likes to buy jogging suits for people. That's like. Chris always, like, and she always, okay, I'm a chunky bitch. Okay, let's be truthful. She buys, like, large. <laughs> I haven't worn a large since I was, like, in, like, the eighth grade. If then. So, Chris always, like, makes out like a bandit. He gets, <laughs> he gets, yeah, he gets, get a pair of jogging pants. He gets jogging pants and a jogging shirt. And he gets his own jogging pants and jogging shirt. <gasps> oh, I just, I just remembered one. But can, let me tell you, no, my, no, my, my best is, uh, I think, what well, was it, about five, six years ago? Yeah, about five or six years ago, Chris bought me plates <clears throat> exactly oh. like what my papa had when I was little. My papa always passed. And so, whew, and so they were awesome plates. And then he bought me Jim and the holograms. <laughs> truly amazing. The, 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 truly, truly amazing. The entire amazing. series. He the bought me the entire series, series yeah. of Jim and the Holograms, and he bought me the Ghostbusters original, um, the real Ghostbusters cartoon, which is what I watched when I was like in elementary school. I don't even remember that cartoon. It was great. It wasn't worth remembering. It's great. Ask him how many times he's watched huh. it. More times than I care to. <laughs> Just like the same number of times I've watched movies you recommended. He also got a real Chris also got a really great Christmas present that I had to search for for months. I had to search for that present for him. Which one? There's a lot of presents. The Pearl Jam oh, the CD, Pearl Jam CD from where yeah. we went and saw Pearl Jam. It took me yeah. like six months to find that bitch. Yeah, whenever we went and saw Pearl Jam in concert, uh, that particular tour, I don't know why they decided to do this. They only did it this time. Every single city they stopped at, they made a CD and sold of that particular concert. So we were able to have a CD. Oh. Uh, but they didn't and make a whole, and they didn't make a whole bunch of the CDs. Right. So right, right. you couldn't just go into any store and buy them. But so it took a while to get them. But yeah, we have a CD of the concert we were at. We're screaming That's cool. in, in yeah, the background. It is cool. It's pretty cool. It is, cool. it is pretty neat. Yeah, I just thought of my worst. Uh, oh, uh, I, I don't know if I should say any names, but... Oh, um, spit them out. I don't care. Well, oh. my mother-in-law... Oh, I knew that was coming. One time. No, I mean, she's a wonderful woman. I love her to death. But one year she had, you know, all of her children were married and had their spouses <laughs> and she had grandchildren and she decided to buy all her children and their spouses pajama pants for Christmas. Except that she forgot to buy mine. Quote, unquote. <laughs> no, she did forget. She <laughs> But yeah, but I mean, she made That's it up. She... That's an accident. Well, That's I mean, no, gift. it was an accident, but like, I'm sitting there going, should I say something? Should I not say something? I don't have a gift to open. Should I say something? And Butter's like, where's your gift? And I, I wasn't going to say anything. I was just going to. You're going to wait until you get oh, an answer she felt to the world before you said something? No, then I mean, she, she made bad. it up to me and uh, I love her to death and I, it was clearly a mistake. I think that was the year uh, that we had the twins, so it was a very hectic year. You know, I it mean, was a really hectic year. Yeah, so uh, clearly it was 
a very obvious accident, and she did not do it on purpose. But it's still the worst. It's awkward. Got it. What well, was awkward? <laughs> Got it. I remember the twins <laughs> meeting Christmas stockings. I remember that. Oh yeah, two twins. Yeah, they were so. There was for those <laughs> listening that don't know what the hell we're talking about. Uh, your twin daughters were born so premature that they fit inside of little tiny uh, miniature Christmas stockings. And they wore yeah. baby doll clothes, right? It was yeah. an actual stocking, but oh, both of them stocking. together oh, both fit. fit into it. Okay. Yeah. And they were born October 28th, and if you think two months later, they still both fit yeah. in one stocking for the Christmas present. Yeah. And the nurses at the hospital took the picture of them. They were still in the hospital right. at Christmas. Right. And... Uh, we went to visit him, and I put my wedding ring around Peyton's wrist. Yeah. Which, if you, you know, you can imagine that being around a wrist. Sure. You can, you can imagine the well, size. I remember, I remember you, because we, you know, they didn't know if they were going to make it. So, they were separated from everybody, so we couldn't go in there and see him. And I remember you were, you were holding them, and you brought them up to the window for us, to, me and Angie, to see. And I remember that I held my, my pinky up, because I was so amazed at how small they were. And I held my pinky up, and my pinky finger was both as thick and as long as their legs. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. It blew uh, my mind. They had, a, they had a Barbie dress. They yeah. wore a Barbie dress. I was going to say, they wore baby doll clothes, right? Yeah. Well, we ended up finding somebody actually started making a preemie. Yeah. And when I tell you, you got a special order of that crap, because, uh, yeah, you can't Which, they were micro it. preemies, right? Yeah, they weighed, at, at their lowest weight, they were one pound, four ounces, yeah. and one pound, five If ounces. I hadn't seen it on my own eyes, I would never believe anybody else telling this story. No, oh, I mean, How small they were. It, yeah. yeah. It's unfathomable. It's crazy. Yep. It is unreal that they could survive, right. honestly. Yep. We, I mean, I couldn't, we couldn't hold them for a couple months, at least. It, you, yeah. you couldn't yeah. even, they would let us put our hand into the incubator, but you could only lay your hand on them. Because if you rub them in any kind of way, it was overstimulating, yeah. and it would... Hurt them. And the mm-hmm. skin was fragile. You tear the skin. Right. So it it was a very difficult time for sure. Yeah, they didn't even have. If I'm remembering right, they didn't even have eyelids. Right. They just had a flap of skin over their no, eyes. No, their eyes were just closed. Oh, they were just closed. They were just oh, okay. closed. Okay. Yeah, they. Uh, they stayed closed for like for a two, long months, time. We got months. nervous. Yeah. Finally, when they opened them, I remember when they when Peyton opened her eyes, we were all. They sent us a message or called on the phone or something because it was big news. Eyes are open. Woo! You know, that kind of news. Yeah. Yeah, that was a trying time back and forth to Lafayette every day. Every day. It was crazy. That's when we lived beside y'all. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Back in the good old days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, back Reese would just walk. Days. Reese would walk out just door and just You're walk inside our door. house. Yep. That's right. <laughs> he goes, hi. <laughs> Hello. How you doing? <laughs> well, Bo didn't think it's your turn. Yep. Well... This is probably going to be a controversial opinion, but I don't have a worst gift or a best gift because every I knew that was I knew it was coming. I brought a fag. (laughs) (laughs) Be a man, be a man, and say it. Every gift that I receive is appreciated. The fact that anyone else in this world thinks about me to purchase anything for me or even to make anything for me is a great thought, and it makes me happy. Even if it's not something that I can use. So. Well, wait, wait. Even if it's not something you can use, that sounds like you have something in mind. No. <laughs> it doesn't. But if Even it's if not it was a pair of banana hammocks. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And that, those were actually pretty good because I got a nice laugh. I've never right. worn them. Ah! I've never you up. Oh, well, Whoa. I have worn them. I don't they know. Have. I don't want to hear that story. Yeah, I don't want to hear that. No, we've already told it. Yeah. But yeah no, you listen, do. he says, ah. Uh, I'm wearing the Christmas underwear. I think you need to do some laundry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you're down to the Christmas draws, it's time to wash some clothes. You are know they what really draws or are they really floss? <laughs> no, they're, no, I don't no, they're know really floss, what they are. But There's a lot of things that don't go in them. <laughs> <Just saying. laughs> and it, it looks like a can of biscuits busted. <laughs> not be posting those pictures <laughs> no the pictures are definitely uh, there are no pictures I was, wait, I, was like, wait, I was about to ask no. I was about to ask better not be. <laughs> no I just love Christmas I'm going to tell you the best gift in the world though is really sitting in this chair right here on Christmas morning and watching everybody else do their thing that while I have a little cup of cocoa or something right that's my favorite right that's that's what's good for me that's the best thing that I can get 
Christmas, right? Chris's favorite is Christmas morning. We have breakfast. Yeah, it's, it's a awesome. tradition. It's a tradition. It's awesome. a big tradition. old breakfast. The movie style breakfast when it's a ridiculous amount of awesome food. You know, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's we, awesome. When we lived in Lake Charles, we used to have a tradition where our, uh, some of our friends would come over. On, on Christmas morning, yes. and that's why she cooks such that's a big breakfast. That's why I'm not saying his name. And uh, friends would oh, come man. over. She, he, he, he who went out shall not be named. No, no, no. Actually, no. the friend that we lost. Yeah, well, you he, know, he passed away. Yeah, he was, he was the mainstay. He was one of them. Yeah, so we they come over and uh, we'd eat a big breakfast and open up gifts with each other, and then uh, we'd uh, watch Christmas Story. That was our tradition. Nice. Yeah. So the do you can put an eye out show. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, love it. Yeah, love that one. Yep. Yeah. Red Rider. I want a red rider. Yeah, I would do. Bi- <laughs> what I would do, out. we did. We did the last year. We have a cliff. Yep. We, we did, did waffles and yep. eggs and bacon and yep. grits and biscuits and gravy. I mean, I went all out. And That's then awesome. Rob came over, and you know, they see this talking about Christmas. She's already been almost in tears twice. See Two how times. bad? But I, how but it's good. Suck? But it, it's not <laughs> that. It's that we miss Cliff. Yeah, but why do you think that that sucks though? Something that brings you to the edge of emotion on that level is not a bad thing. I just think the whole hype of it all and it it's it, people are losing what it's actually about. It has become oh. less about family and yeah, togetherness that's... and become more about what gift am I getting? But what? I also but I I disagree with that. And I'm going to tell you why. I think it's in what your family instills in each other. Because, yes, I do know some families who just give spin thousands of dollars on their kids, and their kids have no... But if you, like, genuinely love each other and everything, and this going to be totally cheese pie, but our Christmases were the best when we didn't even have Christmas. Like, we didn't buy each other the uh, best. Oh, shut up. Yeah. No, <laughs> no <laughs> truly it was. Like, if, no, like, if we didn't have, like, a lot of money to spend, we <sighs> actually really had a good... We made, we made do. I mean... I mean, I have always lived by the motto, it is better to receive than to give. Of <laughs> course. Of course. Yes. You know what my favorite Christmases were? When um, Santa brought presents, so none of them had to be wrapped. You know how much money I saved on gift wrapped and tape? Oh, yeah. When the kids were younger and mm-hmm. we just threw everything in the living room That's under the correct. tree and went to bed. Mm-hmm. Those were good times. But... <laughs> Yeah, when Santa Claus did all of the picking up, you didn't have to pack everything under the tree and wrap it and tape it and do all the foolishness. All right. You just threw everything out and said, here, it's yours. Yeah, because you know? five for six kids, that's a lot of presents. You're yeah. right. That's why I didn't have six kids. That's why we had, No, that's why we had no kids. You're right. Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. We tried not to. You know, no. what can you do? No, I, you said that because the sixth one always gets offended there's, like there's, you don't love her. First of all, there's actually a lot of things you can do. Uh, we I did. know because we, we did, did Guess what? We did well. it twice. We did those things as well. Okay. I had surgery twice to well. not have a child and still had a child. Mm-hmm. Well. So what, what were you and, saying? And Tanner always gets upset when we have that conversation because she's like, y'all wouldn't have had me if you do, if you had your way. You wouldn't. I wouldn't even be here if you had your way. Yeah, well, but we didn't have our way, right. and we were blessed beyond measure. You're meant measure. to be here. Right. Now That's get right. out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. she's the only one who technically we are responsible for. So right. she that is ha- true. She's the only one who doesn't have to get out. <laughs> At least. Well. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, some people in the room are starting to shuffle in their seat, right? <laughs> and it's not me. <laughs> Uh, Reese. <laughs> <laughs> there are three in this house that can move in together. There are. Oh my God! That's you what know, I, said. I offered them an apartment in Lafayette. Go live with your brother Dakota in Lafayette. You don't have to pay rent or not. Go live there. No. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We'd rather stay home with mom. Yeah, I think we discussed that in the last episode. <sighs> It's, it's yeah. still a sore subject. We discuss that a lot more than we should. <laughs> oh, on and off the podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. It. It's, a, it's a time. So have you had enough of Christmas, Miss yeah. Grinch? Yeah, we discussed Christmas for a little, for a few minutes. Are you going to put up a Christmas tree? Yes. When? But I think it's only what, we, well, we only since, have a little one now, right? Since you know, we're in like the second weekend of December. Okay, like, first... We're not in December at all. Okay. Yes, we are. Do not talk about we are. production. <laughs> Do not talk about... Yes, we are. Oh, my God. We I are don't in know. December. We put up six Christmas trees already. <laughs> this what is hilarious. So, is what, hilarious. what is usually done is Thanksgiving. 
weekend is when the tree comes out. That's correct, yeah. Which was like two weeks ago. All right. My Thanksgiving so. dinner was great. I had the best so, Thanksgiving. Now, now that the podcast audience realizes that we film episodes a couple of weeks ahead of time. <laughs> so no, I don't think so. Uh, record, record, we don't film record, at all. <laughs> record a couple weeks ahead of time, so I guess the lies we tell now we got to really be careful because they know we're lying. It's okay. It's they know. Good. They know how it it's works. All good. Yeah. They know at how least, production works. At least we're honest about our lies. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh. I was just asking when you put up a Christmas tree. <laughs> Speaking of Christmas, so uh, one last thing before we get off the topic. Uh, as we have discussed many times on this podcast, Die Hard is definitely a Christmas movie. 100%. And I'm doing a Christmas list this year of movies. And uh, while I was making my list out, <clears throat> Angie pointed something out to me, which I'm very upset about that I did not think of myself. And that is she thought of another Die Hard-esque movie that belongs on a Christmas list. And I was like, you're absolutely right. Bam, it's on the Christmas list. You know what that movie is? Can no. I say it? Can I say it? Yeah. Lethal Weapon. Bingo. Bingo. It takes place in the month of December. Christmas decorations everywhere, and there's a whole lot of Colombian snow in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I can talk about one Is more thing. Is that the one where he gets blown up on the toilet? Nope, that's okay. the, one of the sequels. That's the sequel. I, I don't remember which one is which. It's been a long time. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Reggie, sorry. I hate to uh, upset you, but we have one more. It's one no, more no, no. It's time. not. But it's not okay. Christmas. Just I mean, fucking it is. go with it. <laughs> so you know Some how we made Christmas. how we made a Halloween mix. For Halloween, or like fall mix for like a, in the Tupperware and everything. We made a holiday mix this year. We've never done that. It's yep. got chocolate Teddy Grahams, pretzels, Junior Mint Peppermint Crunch, Andy's Peppermint Crunch Thin Mints, Flips White Fudge Covered Pretzels, White Fudge Covered Shortbread Cookies, Tootsie Roll Snowballs, and Crushed Peppermint in it. And it is Delicious. Oh yeah, like there's no one flavor that overpowers the other flavors. You know, it's just right. You know, you mix it up. We don't have like a, a measurement. We just kind of mix it. Up. Oh yeah, this one gets enough of this and that. Oh my god, it was so good. Yeah, it was so good. Well, speaking of that, I went to the doctor this week, and um, he said I've gained so much weight in the past six months. I need to go on a diet. So, thanks for that. Well, well, we didn't give you any anyway. mix. We didn't give you any of the mix, so you're welcome. I'm just saying. We knew you needed to go on a diet. We just didn't want to say anything. <laughs> Doctor sure did. <laughs> oh yeah. He oh, yeah. had no qualms he about he saying don't that. You don't give it up, huh? Not even a little bit. Woo! You put on some weight. Yeah. I think it's how it yeah. Was. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, wow. exactly. I like that guy. I think. Yeah, I think that was exactly how he worded it. <laughs> so I think. Then I'm sitting in the diet? room, and he looks at my folder next and says, "Oh, you got a little bit extra weight too." <laughs> yes, sir. I'm still fat. <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you. Thanks Same for thing every out. time you go see him. He always yeah. tells you how fat you are. You don't, you don't mind. No, this yeah. was the first time he told me I was fat. Which is good, though. That's his job, you know? No, actually, we pay him not caring about your feelings is his job. Correct. Right, yeah. We don't want him to come in and say, man, you look great. You're no, just, I don't you're want so to be healthy. fat. You're so healthy. <laughs> you're so wonderful. <laughs> I don't care about his bedside manner. I don't want to be fat. Right. Yeah, well, that's not his fault, I don't think. No, it's not. <laughs> it's called stress in life. Is it? Yes. And overeating. Because of stress and life. Yeah, I, I think that is. Yeah, well. Are, are you hot? You know. Yes. Look at them socks. Them socks are sexy, ain't they? If you <laughs> take them off, your feet would be cooler. All right, let's take off my socks, Chris. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Actually, since uh, I don't have to live in this house, Reese, get over here. I don't owe him nothing. <laughs> Come take off the socks and rub the feet, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are really grossed out by feet. Not me. Me neither. I oh, your no daughter Tanner. Oh, I don't Tanner like him at all. is grossed out by feet. Yeah, that she, is correct. I don't like him at all. That is correct, yeah. I don't mind feet. Feet are cool. Yeah. You, you got to have them to warm. woman feet are sexy. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sometimes yeah, if they, they got hammer toes feet. or whatever, no. No, no, no. <laughs> hammer toes. Yeah, no, Hammer no. toes are not the way to go. No. Crusty. No. <laughs> yeah, not the, not the way. The old yeah. athlete's foot and fungus yeah. stuff. No good. Yeah, when a big toe was bent over to the side, they call that hammer toe. Yeah. <laughs> hammer time. You, let me, you got some hammer toe, babe? No, I don't. <laughs> I wouldn't call my feet sexy, but apparently I've discovered tangles. Oh, nice. <laughs> Have you? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. this life is really great. You winning, right? <laughs> oh, so winning. <laughs> Bodie thinks you're sexy. All the time. All the saying. time. Yep. He's really nice? the only one you should worry about. That's He's right. the only one I worry about. That's right. But I don't give He's the only one I worry about. 
Well, there's such a lot. I'm starting to run out of clothes, so it is becoming a problem. <laughs> Does not sound like a problem to me. <laughs> Just saying. Could be a problem for the people who are supposed to be here. Yeah, I'm sure your kids would disagree. I started walking around without the clothes. Also, I... no you know problem what? for me. That actually might be a way to get them out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe I should start doing that. <laughs> like they, wouldn't like, be, they wouldn't be comfortable anymore, would they? <laughs> but if you just go and sit in his chair, how you doing? That's right. <laughs> Swinging. Yeah, you could wear your banana hammock, walk out, and, he, and you could be like, whoops, I dropped this nickel. I got to bend over and pick it up. Oh, my God. We have so much fun. You could stand against the wall, balls to the wall. We would have a good time. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Isn't it great? Yeah. So. I'm getting older now, though. And when you get older as a man, things begin to get lower. <laughs> and grayer. I don't know about gray. No. Stop. <laughs> Stop it. What are you talking about? Do not talk about production. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so there's <laughs> uh, like, literally <laughs> been and and you can tell me if this has happened to you. I don't know if we've talked about this before or not. I don't know. Oh my okay. god, I'm afraid. <laughs> I don't know. I have had one or two occasions. Where I sit on the toilet. And you know these touch the water? Yes, and I go in the water. <laughs> and I'm not thinking that's a good thing. Well, I have had that kind of problem, but it ain't because I'm getting old, buddy. You <laughs> no, I don't follow you because you're such an idiot. <laughs> I don't even want to discuss that because right. that's not you my brought, issue. You brought it up, guys. I down. definitely don't have that issue. You brought it up. But it's not been all the time. I think it depends on, you know, water levels. and <laughs> <laughs> It's not a regular occurrence. Oh, we I'm did recently to fix the toilet. And now the water is lower. But it's never happened at my home toilet. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh That's my God. even better. Oh it's God. always some public restroom. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So that would explain the rash. Right? <laughs> right. No. We're at a restaurant or something. I hear the hand dryer in the men's restaurant. You're you know? gonna know why. Uh, yeah, I'm like, God yeah. damn it, Bodie. I'm just turned around, backed up to that dryer, <laughs> getting getting clean, man. You know what I'm saying? Blowing on your balls. <laughs> hey, that warm air feels nice, <laughs> especially after a cool oh, dip in the water. <laughs> This is probably why God made man stand up to pee. I'm telling you. You think that's why? So that his balls wouldn't dip in the toilet? You think God was like, God was like, God was like if I don't make him stand up, their balls are going to dip so in the toilet. So we wouldn't tongue. have to think about these scenarios. Because if y'all had to do it on a regular basis, my God, this is all the podcast would be. Hey, look, you know why it's funny? Whew. Cause because it's true. It's true. <laughs> yep. That's why because it's funny. It's true. <laughs> this is what you got to look forward to, Reese. <laughs> yep. Another 30 years, you're going to be having like the same picture judgment. of him losing his shit right now. Yeah. Yeah. If, he was, if, he, if he wasn't the tech guy and he was standing next to a microphone, it would there'd be a lot of laughter recorded. Right. <laughs> I will tell you this. A cool dip in the water is a hell of a lot better than sitting on them bitches. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of a lot better. Have you ever sat on your balls? No, because I know where they are and I know how to avoid them. I can honestly say I've never had that issue. Well, speaking of balls, Veterans Day passed recently. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh okay. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Veterans I'm like, how Day did the two go balls. together? Speaking of testicles, <laughs> this reminds me of World War II. If what? If you I'm would let me finish. Somebody lost the testicle in the war. <laughs> no. <clears throat> Remember, so Bodie used to be in the National Guard. Okay. <laughs> what did you used to do at summer camp, Bodie? With your balls. <laughs> oh my God. What? You used to shave what? them? I have no idea what I did with my balls at summer camp. <laughs> I, what did I do, do we want to know? Buddy Robert said you used to hang them out of your shorts. Oh, we don't wear shorts at summer camp. Well, you hung them out of somewhere. Oh, I used he to hang them all over. In cute. fact, I did that at his wedding. <laughs> the first or the second? The first. The first. 
The first wedding. That's his very it, first wedding. Over the first or the second. Yes. He can tell you the whole story. We should have him on so he can give it to you. So how? What, it, how do what? your balls out? Because I pull them out. <laughs> Just Let me your tell balls? You. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. You see, you got your brother over here <laughs> who swears up and down I got this BDE. Right? I'm, I'm John Holmes number two, right? That's what he's swinging. I don't have that. <laughs> you understand? Okay. Yeah, BBE. So we have, in in my area, what we have is uh, cocktail smokies. Okay? So what we have to be proud of is the gigantic coconut testicles. <laughs> so when we're trying to display our peacock manhood, we pull out the testicles because the other parts don't, don't match up. I know, but what I'm saying is, technically, how are you walking around with them out? I'm, I, the I unzip the zipper and, and the then zipper I remove them. the testicle <laughs> globules and then I just walk. It's called hanging brain. Is it, oh my, is so it that dangerous with the zipper, though? Only it's if you pull it up. Only if you zip yeah, up. You just got to be careful with those parts. That's all. Being yep. crazy. Uh, speaking of uh, penises and balls, that reminds me that... Um, World War Two. I just want to, I just want to point out that, veteran? that uh, last week I blew that joke so hard that that joke mistook me for Rose McGowan auditioning for a movie role. I just want to. I'm sorry, everyone. Yeah, you did. Just like that one. You blew that one too. I didn't yeah. blow that one. I didn't blow that. One. Actually, him blowing. You started laughing before he even started. I couldn't help it because I could see I, him killing it. it. He was just yeah, killing it in his own mind. It- it that's was what, so funny. Whenever you started laughing, I couldn't hold it. I couldn't hold it when you started laughing. I was like, yo, this joke's so funny, I gotta laugh. Yes. I'm seriously worried that Reese is about to piss himself. Reese is laughing so hard, he can't hardly stand it. I think his ribs are probably hurting. <laughs> Sometimes, you have to discuss. And, you know, yep, yep. as a man, you gotta know that this is your future reality. No issue well, off topic. Well, he's out instead of be trying to hold it all in. He's good, he's good. He's, he's doing, doing fine. Himself. He's a fine young man. He's doing great. He's he don't enough. have to worry about touching the water yet. <laughs> <laughs> he's alright. How do you know? Maybe he has the big ball syndrome. Because we changed his diapers. <laughs> well, my I think, God. I, I think everybody in this room it. changed his diapers. <laughs> we all changed his oh diapers. God. Well, if it's the same size as it was then. Well, it's not, but you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> or hopefully it's not. Well, yeah, you never I know. don't want to know. <laughs> all I can tell you is that proportionally you know. You know? Right. Dakota, we changed his diapers and I refused to do it after the first time. <laughs> I would never do it again. I always tell her, you need to take Dakota away from me because he embarrasses me. And this was when he was two months old. Right. <laughs> you ever seen that? Uh, there used to be a company, I don't know if they're still around, T-Shirt Hell. And uh, I remember they used to have little baby T-shirts that would say shit like, uh, you know, are you my daddy? And uh, there was one that said, uh, hung like a five-year-old. Was- <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's my T-shirt. You should buy that for me. <laughs> I love it. Yep. Oh my God. This this uh, episode went off in a direction that I did not expect. I love Sometimes it. Sometimes we're talking nope. about Christmas. Sometimes, yeah. You gotta just get into some cock and balls. That's it. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Tis the season. Tis the season. That's right. Absolutely. Oh my God. I don't know if this next topic is going to be nearly as interesting, but I guess we'll have to try. Probably not. It is. No, it is. No, it's. It's crazy. Like it's okay. I mean, there's nothing more interesting than my balls. <laughs> <laughs> just okay. saying. So, uh, uh, just for like, for yeah, like so technicalities. Yeah, so we can talk about it for a few more minutes. No, no, no. My question was. Why not? Why not? No, my question was, did the zipper hold the balls up? Oh, no, no, no. You don't want balls to touch <laughs> no, zipper. No, 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 no they don't touch zipper. I didn't know if they like sat on top of <laughs> oh, the no, zipper. No, no. And I the don't zipper know if you know how it. zipper works. But it's, I know. See, that's where the technicality came in. Well, I was like, how That's what I'm saying. Did like, you did you pull that? it out and did you sit well, it on top of the zipper? Not no, zipping. you got to let some of the underwear lay over and, and cushion. No, it's, because it's actually not the underwear. It's, it's the, the pants have a flap that covers okay, the zipper. Okay. So you just make sure that that little right. flap is covering gotcha. the metal portions that's, of the but zipper. But that's what I'm asking. So that yeah. the teeth don't Oh, yeah, you know what? That's which they will do. Okay, I got you. I got you. 
So yep. you just build yourself a little padded area where your testicles yep. can. Y'all had a lot of teeth chewing your balls off. Actually, yeah. Listen, <laughs> protecting our balls is like the first thing we think about when we wake up, and it's the last thing we think about when we go to bed. Okay? That is yeah. not it's true. Very to important belief. to man. That's very important to a man. You're what? a liar. That's not true. That is for me. not what? the last thing you think of at night. Yeah, that is not the first and last thing you think of. Oh my like god! Protecting my balls. I was yeah. trying to make no. a point. No, no. Unfortunately, she knows the thing that I think of first, and the thing that I think we of. We all last. know the thing of you think. And of first the thing that I think of all in between. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing, and it's not balls. <laughs> well, technically, it is. No, it's really not. <laughs> oh my god! So anyway, yeah, <clears throat> next, what do you got for us, Uncle yeah. Chris? Okay, so you Uncle know, Chris. you know how uh, <laughs> if you live in Louisiana. Everybody knows at certain towns that once you get there, you better go to speed limit or your ass is getting a ticket. Yeah, like Ollie. Yeah, so, right. Zwally. Do you know why that is? Because, because I they're funding. They're making money. Yeah, okay. Revenue. It's a large so, source of revenue. So check this out. Only in Louisiana and Ohio does this exist. There are only two states in the United States where this is the case. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> they uh, they do not have a traffic or municipal court. They have what's known as a mayor's court, right? Which is where the mayor is the judge and jury and appoints his own prosecutor mm -hmm. to sit right. on cases, okay? Sure. So what they do is, uh, and here's the, here's the really fucking crazy part. The mayor does not have to have any legal certifications whatsoever he doesn't have to be a lawyer he doesn't have to have graduated law school nothing he just be a mayor correct and he can fucking be a judge well this jerk. is louisiana right yeah. so yeah there's a book uh called uh, strategic relocation and it breaks down all the 50 states different aspects of them which ones are better to go to which ones weren't and louisiana is ranked the lowest for uh as far as political corruption <laughs> well yeah That's the lowest score sure so let that be known. So, <laughs> what's, be known. what's happening is um, there is a, uh, a, a village north of Lake Charles called Fenton. Mm -hmm. 226 residents. Okay? The mayor's name is Eddie Alfred. Oh, you calling out names. Yeah, fuck okay. them. Fuck them. So, 90% uh, of Fenton's revenue in the last year that was reviewed, which I guess was uh, 2022, I think. Their revenue was one point three million dollars. Okay, it was like one million three hundred sixty-six thousand, something right. like that, to be exact. Ninety percent of that revenue came from uh, traffic stops, basically. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what happens is, uh, if you drive through Fenton, you yep. get pulled over for any fucking reason, you're gonna pay a fine. That's correct. And they would actually have on the thing, um, <clears throat> they would actually write down on the tickets like, this person gave me attitude. Don't help them in any way. Uh, this person refused to give me their phone number, which is their right. In the United States of America, they don't have to give me a phone number. So they would say, they didn't give me their phone number. I think they have a bad attitude. Don't help them. You know? So they would write that basically on all the tickets. So uh, some peop So what happened is uh, this came to the attention of some reporters. News in station, New Orleans. And, and uh, it was two different. I, I don't remember the exact name of the station. It was two different uh, organizations that worked together to start looking into this. And, of course, the mayor refused to uh, do an interview, obviously, because how could he fucking possibly justify Right, you can't justify I mean, that. You know, you know that your revenue presides tremendously from traffic violations. Right. You know that. In 1972, the U.S. Supreme <clears throat> Court ruled that uh, the 14th Amendment, the defendant's rights, this is the 14th Amendment, are violated if a mayor sits on the bench and is responsible for the town's finances and uh, the... Finance, the substantial portion of the finances uh, exceed ten percent. You know, <clears throat> right? Then, then it is unfair to the person <laughs> sitting in front of you because because the person who's going to collect the money to be spent is the person deciding on whether or not you have to pay, pay that money. money. Correct. You know. So yeah, how that is allowed? You know, that's what uh, we was watching the report on. And the guy was like, "How is this not going to the Supreme Court and been challenged?" Because mm -hmm. nobody has. Because this is clearly a constitutional violation. Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah, it is a problem. Yep. It's an ethics problem, right? For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, Fenton actually has the highest percentage of revenue from fines and forfeitures than any other town in the in the state of Louisiana. And I think. And I've said, never heard of it. Well, 
good. You have to drive through it to get to Kinder. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm, I'm saying? Like, yeah. I've never heard of it, and yet so, you have to drive through it to get to Kinder. So Louisiana has about 250 areas that have a mayor's court. Mm-hmm. And Town of Berwick has a mayor's court. Most, most, uh, most of them have a magistrate appointed by the judge to kind of oversee things, but um, 10 towns, which I don't have the names of the 10 towns, only have a mayor as the judge. <laughs> and the judge right. You know. But what you have to look at is each one of those individual municipalities, do they have larger than a 10% revenue from traffic citations? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what you have to look at. Yeah. Because there's a lot of them that are doing it right. Yeah. Right? There's only few that are exceeding that tremendously, like Fenton. And I know because I got a ticket in Fenton before. Huh. You're going through Fenton. And you better be doing five miles under. Yeah. Correct. Because they're stopping everything. Because that's where they're earning their money. And I right. think the big ethics issue with that is imagine you are the law enforcement officer. Right? Put yep. yourself in those right. shoes for a minute. And your salary depends on the fact that you write tickets. If normally you're a law enforcement officer and you give someone some sort of leeway on violation of speed fines and things like that how would that affect you knowing that you had to write so many tickets to in order to ensure your salary was paid would you be writing more people for more violations or would you be a nice guy and let people off for two miles over or something right. like that i don't think you do that's right in fact i think that there's certain occasion where you might even not be truthful about right. the fact that you saw someone doing certain speed on the <laughs> radar. Right. You may fudge, yeah. hey, 45 is close enough to 50. We'll call it 50. You know what I'm saying? Right. No, That's I get the it. That's ethics issue. I get it. And it forces law enforcement officers. It doesn't force them to because you obviously have freedom of choice at the end of the day to choose the right thing. Yeah. But it puts them in a position where they're tempted to write traffic violations to people who don't deserve them. Because they need the, the funding. And that's a terrible situation, right. and it's very bad. And there's a lot of situations like that that exist, even very close to where we are. Right. Yeah, they actually have an audio recording of the mayor that was recorded secretly, <laughs> obviously. And this is, a, this is a fucking quote from the recording. He said, our main income is traffic tickets, and they ain't getting written. So that's no good thing right there. Right. So that just tells you... <laughs> It tells right. you a whole lot about the situation. So he's putting pressure on the mm -hmm. law enforcement officers yep. to write traffic citations. Right. Even if they go through a whole shift and don't see any violations, they're expected to write tickets because that's what pays their salary. Right. And that's a difficult situation because you get looked at like you're not doing your job if you don't write 10 tickets in an eight-hour shift. And you get a negative comment by the mayor just mm -hmm. like that. Yep. What happens if you just didn't see anybody violating the law? Right. Because well, that happens every day. Right. The, right. the news um, anchor that was reporting it said they average between 14 to 16 tickets a day in Fenton. That's ridiculous. That's, That's just... not surprising. It's a little small, nothing town, too. You blink and you miss Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. I just remember the silos. When you first walked in, and there's, <clears> a, um, there's like a little gas station, and there's a graveyard right yeah. before you go. I think there's like some kind of little national forest right there as well. That it's just a bunch of trees on mm -hmm. the side of the highway. It's really small, nothing to it, really. right? But yeah, that's a big issue. That's a big dramatic problem that yeah. people. I just want our podcast listeners to know: don't drive through Fenton if you can help it, right? <laughs> or no, or drive five below, <laughs> or stay away from it if you can. Yeah, no, stay yeah. away from it. Who knows it, totally. if they're gonna? If, yeah. Be truthful about that. They could write you a ticket for going too slow. That is true. Yeah. That is very true. I know it. I know it. So, so you're screwed yeah, Just avoid way. them. Yeah, just avoid them. Yeah. So, but that should be fixed, like you said. Somehow, some way. That somebody has to it. take it to the Supreme Court. Because they took it to the Supreme Court. I would yeah, imagine. I say that. that but, you know yeah, what I mean? I don't that's, know how. The, that's the thing. It's yeah. so troublesome and so Yeah, who do you, if it happens to you, who do you go to? Yeah. Right. I don't know. So. Tough deal. Yeah. yeah I don't like it. I don't yeah. like that. No, me either. So that's why, you know. Wanna, we just wanted to bring it to attention use, to everybody. Yeah, I want to use this podcast for good, not just for evil. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So uh, you know, I'm going to continue. Uh, this is going to take, you know, three or four episodes. Oh, you were telling us about uh, uh, people getting yeah, get, killed people on getting movie killed. sets. Yep. People getting yeah. killed on movie sets. So I said I was going to do it in chronological order, but I forgot one last episode. Man, fucked up already. Huh? So I'm oh, telling you, right. I, suck, I suck at this podcast thing. 
Jeez. So, uh, <clears throat> the movie Ben Hur with Charlton Heston, which is a pretty famous movie that probably millennials and Gen Z don't know about, but it was a huge movie for a long time. Sure. Um, very long movie also. And there's a very famous chariot race scene in the movie. This massive chariot race took a lot of stunts, a lot of stunt doubles, you know, a lot of people doing stuff. And uh, so while they were filming uh, the chariot race, a stuntman, uh, his wheel broke on his chariot and he fell off and he got killed. I'm sure he got ran over either by, by a horse, horse or, or a chariot. Or a chariot yeah. yeah, so... So that's the only, that's all that's all the information I got from it. So uh, he fell, then oops, immediately yep got crushed. So uh, the <clears throat> moving right along uh, in 1929, there was a movie called The Aviator, and a plane that was doing some aerial uh, scouting for filming locations crashed, and a cameraman one act and one actor was killed. So the aviator before they even started filming. Yeah, what year was that? 1929. 1929. Those planes have come a long way. That was a good year. Yeah. Actually, I noticed uh, plane crashes resulted in a lot of people's deaths uh, early (laughs) on in the movie, as we were about to find out. So, uh, in 1930, uh, there was a movie called Hell's Angels. It was an epic World War I movie. Uh, So, uh, three pilots were killed in three separate plane crashes. In the same movie? In the same movie. Wow. So I don't know what the hell. You think at some point they would say, "Okay, yeah, we're not doing this. This right. movie ain't working out." Yeah, yeah, we need to. <laughs> Did yeah. you not realize that movie is supposed to be like uh, pretend, and you're not actually supposed to fucking crash the planes? I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, and again, in 1930, there was a movie called "Some Men Are Dangerous," <laughs> and two aircraft being used as camera planes collided with each other, killing ten people, ten men. Uh, they included the director, the assistant director, the center photographer, the director of photography, and two cameramen. Uh, but only five of the bodies were ever found. I guess they burned up. I don't know. Wow. But uh, believe it or not, they finished filming the movie uh, on schedule. Even with all those made wow. people, That's because there was like one of the last scenes they had to film for the movie. So they just went ahead and somebody came yeah. in and finished wrapping up the last scene. It was like, screw this. We're yeah. releasing this. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. Yep. So the last one I'm going to talk about tonight is a, <clears throat> a movie that took place in 1931. It was called The Viking. And it was a movie uh, about um, a seal hunter and a local man that was considered a jinx in the town where they, they were operating. And they, they sort of have a, a conflict that builds up through the movie. That's what the movie's about. Okay. And on the movie poster, it says, uh, you can see the real thing. So I'm fairly certain that means that they showed... Seals getting clubbed to death. Wow. Yeah, I would imagine, because, you know, nobody gave a shit about animals yeah, back in those days. You didn't have all of the Greenpeace people. No, no. In fact, they used to, uh, believe it or not, they used to um, blindfold horses so they could uh, have them pull, in westerns, they could pull wagons and they would trick the horses into running off a cliff so they could film it. Wow. Yeah. Because, you know, a horse won't voluntarily <laughs> lead to his death. What? Yeah. As it turns out, a horse will not voluntarily leave to death, even for a movie. Wow. So they have to blindfold them. So, yeah, they don't do that anymore. As it turns out. Wow. But uh, so anyway, getting off track. But uh, so off track. <laughs> so uh, nineteen <laughs> pun intended. Nineteen thirty one, the Vikings. So they're filming this movie about a seal hunter, and after they finished filming the movie, the director decided that they, uh, you know, he wanted to really spruce up the film with some extra shots of ice flows, and uh, I guess potentially uh, seal hunting, because the, you know uh, the director and just a small film crew uh, actually. Uh, got a ride with the ship that ironically was called the Viking, and uh, that was going seal hunting. So they they gonna they gonna ride with this you know on this ship and then just film you know as they pass in ice and stuff like that. So they could just have these extra shots to splice into the movie. And of course, uh, because the ship was swimming in you know ice infested water, it had uh, dynamite on it in case they got stuck and they had to blast dynamite so they could work their way out. And the case of dynamite accidentally got lit, and the whole thing blew up. The entire ship blew up and killed everybody on board. It killed twenty-seven people. Wow! Well, that's when yeah. smoking was just yeah. I don't, everybody yeah. did it, and nobody. Yep. Did I don't. Shit. I don't know exactly uh, what you know how they accidentally lit an entire case of dynamite, but uh, yeah, that's what happened. So crazy, killed, right? Yeah. So they finished filming the movie because they wanted a few extra shots. Twenty-seven. You know, they got killed along with twenty-seven people. Wow! It's ridiculous. So. And uh, we'll have to save the rest of the movie deaths for uh, next week. Oops. And to think yep. that they just 
had the strike recently as opposed to that many years ago when so many people were dying on set. Yeah, that's because nobody gave a shit. Like, if they went on strike, nobody would care. Kind of like that. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, exactly, yeah. <laughs> if, if Brad Pitt came and started crying because he might get killed on his next movie set, I'd be like, I don't give a shit, start right. filming. Right. <laughs> Yeah. That's right. Get out there and take your shirt that's off. Right. That's right. That's why you get paid the big bucks, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Let's do this. I didn't hear you complaining when you were jumping up and down on Angelina Jolie. That's right. Shut up and dance. Yep, that's right. Yep. <laughs> um, so, speaking Monkey. of movies, I mean, <laughs> yeah. We could have to talk about Brad. We'll do it next week. We'll talk about Brad Pitt and uh, face blindness. We're going to talk about okay. that topic. Oh, know? yeah. That's I'm calling the most it so ridiculous we have to talk thing about that I've ever seen, yeah. heard, or I love it. I love it. So stupid. All right. So, uh, the movie that I'm going to recommend this episode is uh, Oblivion. It's a sci-fi movie. Oblivion. Made in 2013. Starring Tom Cruise, Andrea Riseborough, Olga Kurilenko. I guess that's how you say her name with a fine ass. I don't know how you say it. Redhead? No. No, the brown hair. Yeah. Whew. She's sexy. <laughs> the redhead's and, hot, too. And Morgan. Yeah, the redhead is hot. She's pretty. And Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. And yep. Nicholas, whatever triple flipping his name is. Yeah, I don't know what his damn name is. I didn't write his name down, so I didn't say Clearly, anything. he's important. Uh, he's, he's from um, Game of Thrones. He's Cersei's brother. Yeah, whatever. I didn't follow that show, so I don't know. Oh, what? The Screw one-handed that bastard. Did you just say that you didn't follow Game of Thrones? Correct. I didn't like it from episode one. What? We yep. cannot be friends. Well, we cannot be friends. All right. Well, good Are thing you we're related. <laughs> How? How do you not like Game of Thrones? Oh, because of the cursing. <laughs> and, and the massive well, no, no, no. cursing does not belong in a medieval fantasy oh show. my it does god not belong. And also, oh my an, god we talked about the fuck word and how no, no. early say, in the you couldn't say it I just say I'm saying you can't say it in a fantasy movie that's what I'm saying you know it just what doesn't work that? it just takes uh, you out it takes you out of the reality of how the, boring it would be no somebody help me understand this logic Mr. Also, everything has to there be was, perfect there was an excessive amount of, of yeah yes. there was also a, an excessive amount of penis flapping in there I didn't uh, see a lot of that what okay when I don't know I saw some episodes and I was like I'm out well apparently Did your you? eyes were drawn see any. to is that, that area right yeah you just must be focused is that what it was you must be hyper focused on the on the penis on the penis that's just the way it is you know you are that guy I guess. And what you gonna do? What you gonna do? It's, it's 2023. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, there, there were a lot of gay love scenes, but I don't remember a lot of penis. I never saw any. I don't that I can remember. Maybe in my you brain. blocked it out of your mind, yeah, and he can't help but see it. I don't know. I remember the tutors, which was horrible with that particular aspect. Yeah. I didn't want any part of that. Right. But the Game of Thrones, not so much. Okay, I remember penis, but if you say there was no penis, then I guess there wasn't. I don't know. Well, you know. I'm not really one to judge I, how much penis there is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not an expert All right, I on a lot of penis. No, I'm just saying. I, I just know Jason Momoa was in it and he's hot. So the plot of the movie is uh, Oblivion, that is, not Game of Thrones. <laughs> the, the plot of Oblivion is that, um, of course, it takes place in the future, as most sci-fi movies do. And uh, this alien race has uh, come to Earth and uh, destroyed the moon sort of throw earth into chaos, you know, cause deserts where they would, you know, not be deserts and, you know, all that kind of bullshit. And uh, so then uh, that has allowed them to basically take over. They're, they've sort of like killed off basically almost every human being uh, left on earth. And uh, Tom Cruise and this girl are on this special station um, sent down to protect um, these hydraulic machines sucking water up. <clears throat> on the earth and uh their job is to have these like drones flying around they're supposed to protect the uh aliens from trying to sabotage the machinery and uh if, if like the drones go down they have to repair the drones stuff like that it's sort of like a repair maintenance security it's really crew. good movie so we, i think we saw that you might have you might have a lot of people didn't it see it has any people in it right it hardly has any people so what happens is uh tom cruise is going to repair a drone and uh the aliens try to capture him rather than kill him, which is not what they're supposed to do. So it gets them to thinking something is out of the ordinary. So what happens is uh, they um, wipe everybody's memory that they send down to Earth so that they only know, basically, I guess, the what day they're, they're sent down to Earth. They don't have any, they can have no memories of their past, so they don't know what took place. They just, what they're told, how the war went. They don't know exactly how the war took, you know, exactly all the beats of the war. So, uh, 
Tom Cruise is starting to say, well, maybe they didn't tell us everything that really happened because they these aliens shouldn't be trying to capture me at this point that they've almost completely destroyed every human. There's no reason to capture me. So he starts so some other things start to happen that he starts to realize don't make a lot of sense. So he starts trying to put two and two together and figure out what's going on. And uh, once you realize what's happening, uh, it's a pretty interesting plot. You know, it's a pretty interesting movie. Once once the the plot twist comes in, uh, it gets very it interesting. Kicks in. Yeah, and. You know, there's a lot of nice action sequences, and, and I don't say this very often, but the CGI in the movie is spectacular. You know, it, there's, there was I don't, I don't remember any shots where I thought, ah, you could tell the CGI. It looked pretty flawless. So I, I enjoyed that. It, it was a, it's a damn good movie. It flew under the radar, I think, because the, the, the trailer for the movie didn't do it justice. It didn't really show you what you were in for. So I think a lot of it, because I remember seeing the trailer and thinking, that movie's not going to be that good. But it's actually fantastic. They really screwed up not promoting it properly, you know. That's why a lot of people see it, but so that's why I'm telling you about it. Check it out, Oblivion. Oblivion. Tom Check Cruise. it out. Yep. I think we saw it. Okay, that'd be great. But it has Morgan did. Green, Morgan Freeman in it, so that right, that would be something worth watching. Oh shit! Oh, oh so if Morgan Freeman's in, you watch it. <laughs> I'm just saying, you always have these movies no one's ever heard of with people that have names that no one's ever heard of. Correct. And did you watch some time past? Did you watch Blast from the Past? No. I mean, I didn't figure you would have. Oh, let me, let, me, uh, let me give you some trivia about um, Morgan Freeman that you can tell in this movie. So Morgan Freeman got into a car accident, I believe it was, and permanently damaged, uh, I think it was his left arm. So uh, now on when he does movies, he, he does things in such a way you can't tell that his arm is pretty much useless. So in this movie, his arm is useless. So... Uh, if you do watch it, pay attention. To, like, there's a part where he's smoking a cigar, and uh, he like takes the cigar, like he has a cigar in his in his hand that doesn't really work, and he takes it out of his hand with his good hand and puts it in his mouth because he can't lift his hand. He's up. got like nerve damage. Yeah, in his yeah I don't know exactly. He what, has to wear a compression glove. Yeah. So, just something <laughs> to keep an eye on from now on when well, you watch a Morgan. Fuck Freeman. up his voice. No, nope, that's, that's true. true. Right. That's true. Right. Yep. Very nice. I do have to tell you that. I don't get the big dog, big dog nickname the way you might think I get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you get it because you're a big motherfucker. That's right. Yeah. Just, who, could, who could fucking lay a guy out with one punch? No, we get it. No, just no. Not I, in, or a chick. You know. Yeah, or a chick, yeah, <laughs> as the case may be. It yeah. might be. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah. No, we know. And, and court knew and all kinds of people knew. Yeah. Try to get your ass whooped. That's I mean. Right. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you got to punch a bitch. And sometimes you do. That. Sometimes you do. Listen, yeah. here's the thing. Here's my spiel on that particular aspect. If a woman feels that she can put her place, put herself in the place of a man by swinging or hitting or punching or doing anything like that to a man, then she deserves to be in that place. Yep. Right? Right. And there's a lot of that going on these days where women will punch a man in the face or slap a man in the face three or four times and think that the man is just supposed to stay there and take it. And then they get shocked when the man knocks them the hell out. Right. I think if you if you if you don't put yourself in that position then you probably wouldn't get knocked out. But when <laughs> you put yourself in that spot by hitting me, I would, it would probably take two or three times before I would lay you out, but I'm still gonna lay you out. Right. Hashtag you too. That's right. <laughs> equality, right? right. Yeah. I mean, we're all about no, that's equality. Right. That's right. And and I'm certainly not going to pull punches whenever you're beating on me. You know, it's just the way it is. Yep. All right. On the note of uh, beating women, let's go ahead and close this episode. <laughs> yeah, let's so. beat women up. <laughs> Only if they ask for it. Only if, if they, they deserve it. Only first. if they deserve it. Right? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> if they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good to me. All right. I'm ready. All right. Big dog out. Big dick out. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>